magic word Here in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun Hello, 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 it's me, your friend Gino. I'm your favorite host of the Best Young Children's Show, and I want you to grow in the direction you want to go. So if someone wants to stop you, then use your magic word. The magic word is... No! And we're going to play a story. Story time, straight into it. Uh-oh, look out, it's the Pied Piper. town of Hamlin in the province of Hanover in Germany. The citizens all lived happily and that's why you would never have heard anything about them if it weren't for this shocking story I'm going to tell you. rats in the cellars of Hamelin, just as there are everywhere else. And at that time, they were not too nasty. And the cats of the town were able to keep them in order without too much trouble. But in the spring of the year I'm talking about, people began to notice that not only were there more rats than usual, but that they were getting bigger and stronger, so that the cats were no longer masters of the situation. The citizens were not too unhappy at first, because they expected things would soon sort themselves out. But instead of this, matters got worse, until the townspeople didn't dare to go to bed without being guarded by an armed servant. So scared were they of waking up half-eaten by the terrible rodents. The town council discussed the matter ceaselessly. I won't have a single ear of corn. My wheat has been eaten down to the roots. Don't count on my stocks. They have cleared them right out. Last night I found they'd made their nests in the soup tureen. They began by drinking the soup, of course. At our house there was a complete family in my hat this morning. I didn't dare to touch it. And I came here this morning bareheaded. I should almost certainly get a chill. Mr. Mayor. Unless you take suitable measures, the whole town will die of starvation and cold. But what do you want me to do? I'm as desperate as you are, even though I'm your mayor. Already they've eaten everything in my farmyard. My cats too, and now my dog, a great Dane, that was never afraid of anything. At this very moment, they're attacking a the thatch in my house. And when they've eaten me up too, you will be without a mayor. And you will have to take suitable measures by yourselves. <laughs> So their discussions went round and round in circles. They tried everything they could think of. The rats swallowed all the poison put down for them, but it did them not the slightest harm. And they destroyed the traps with their teeth. It was rumored that they had been attacking horses even little girls. All this explained
explains why when the Pied Piper presented himself to the town council, he was immediately admitted and his words were keenly listened to. rid you of your rats this very evening. No, oh, oh, easy to say, Mr. Mountebank, but it seems to me it will be more difficult to carry it out. Don't call me Mountebank, Your Worship. It is true I wear a pointed hat and my dress is in many colours like harlequins. Professionally, I am a flute player and this is what can help you. Thanks to a special gift I have, I am able to charm all sorts of animals. This pink diamond is a present from the Emperor of China in gratitude for relieving his empire of a dreadful plague of toads. This golden watch, encrusted with emeralds, came from the King of Sicily for disposing of legions of lizards that infested his kingdom. Now, would you like me to take your rats in hand? Uh, how will you set about it? That is my secret. Just tell me how much you will pay me. Oh, 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 oh 50,000 crowns, if you succeed. I shall succeed. You need have no doubt about that. But 50,000 crowns, that's too much just for a little bit of fluting. My price is a thousand crowns. No more. No less. To the townsfolk of Hamelin, this offer was very interesting. The rats had already cost them many hundred times more. So they accepted eagerly promising to pay the thousand crowns within 24 hours if the rats really disappeared. That evening, they prepared for bed more hopefully than they had been able to for weeks. The following day, at dawn, the Pied Piper stood in the marketplace. He put his flute to his lips, and soon hundreds thousands and it seemed millions of rats were leaving the houses the sheds the trees the drains to assemble all round him there were black ones gray ones fawn ones fat ones thin ones an absolute ocean of rats filling the marketplace Still playing his flute, the Pied Piper set off towards the south gate of the town and all the rats followed him silently as in a procession. The postman looked on confused. The milk boy and several other inhabitants of the town were quite unnerved by this amazing sight. The Pied Piper went as far as the edge of the river. The rats did not stop when he did. But went on into the water. In less than an hour, they were all drowned. By midday, it became clear that not a single rat remained in Hamlin. Then the Pied Piper presented himself to the town council. I believe, gentlemen, the job has been well done and you have no complaints? Uh, my friend, a, a truly amazing thing happened this morning, and because it happened at the same time as your visit to our town, uh, we regard you most sympathetically, believe me. Uh, indeed, we are thinking very seriously of making you uh, an honorable citizen of Hamlet. I do not wish to offend you in any way, Your Worship, but I can do nothing with either your sympathetic feelings or your honorable citizenship. All I want from you is to pay over to me the thousand crowns you promised in exchange for the service I have rendered you. Service? What service? 
Ah, Wretch committed suicide. Everyone saw it. Your presence meant nothing at all. Well, even if it did, you must admit that a little bit of fluting is not worth a thousand crowns. <laughs> come, come now, we, we won't bear you a grudge. No, just um, here's a hundred crowns for your journey and uh, have a drink with us before you go. Gentlemen, be careful. For those who mock me, I have a tune on my flute that doesn't cost anything. It would be better for you never to hear it. What's this? A ragamuffin? A musician? Who cannot even afford to get a suit of clothes all in the same material? Go to the devil, you mountebank! And may you burst while playing that trumpet of yours or whatever it is. The Pied Piper went out without saying a word, and the town council was very pleased with its mayor. You put him in his place properly, your worship. Your worship, you were magnificent in your authority. I shall vote for you next time, your worship. It's a promise. The very next day at dawn, the Pied Piper was back again in the middle of the marketplace. He put his flute to his lips. And all the children of the town began to leave their homes to gather round him. All of them came. Big ones and small ones, fat and thin, blondes, brunettes, redheads, making an ocean of heads in the marketplace. Still playing his flute, the Pied Piper made his way towards the northern gate of the town. All the children followed him in a joyful procession and watched by their petrified parents. When he got to the mountainside, the Pied Piper stopped. A big rock opened up, revealing a cave in the mountainside. And into this, the children went, right to the last one. And then the mountain closed up again. Since that day, neither the children nor the Pied Piper were ever seen in the good city of Hamelin. The mayor, understandably, was dismissed. He was also driven out of the town. But this did not bring the children back. And as for the town council, it spent many hours discussing the payment of debts and the keeping of promises. It's time for another poem. And this one's called... God, Make My Life a Little Light by N. Bentham Edwards That. Friends give of themselves. God, make my life a little light, within the world to glow, a tiny flame that burneth bright, wherever I may go. God, make my life a little flower, that giveth joy to all. Content to bloom in native bower, although its place be small. God, make my life a little staff, whereon the weak may rest. That so what health and strength I have may serve my neighbours best.
Now you know what time it is. It's nature time. We're going to talk about a plant that you may already know about from going on walks with your family. It's the stinging nettle. Stinging nettles are easily distinguished plants with a memorable sting. This plant, which can easily reach six feet in height, has fine hairs on the stems and leaves. Each hair is like a hollow needle filled with formic acid. This acid can redden the skin and cause a non-spreading rash that can last up to 24 hours. Remedies for this sting include a plant that often grows next to it called jewel weed. Applying the crushed stem of this plant to the affected area soothes the irritated skin. Another method for alleviating the pain is to apply a mixture of baking soda and water. Rubbing human saliva on the stung area can lessen the pain as well. The stinging nettle was a symbol of good luck and eating it three times could prevent you from becoming ill. Celtic people believed a thick cluster of nettles signaled that fairies lived nearby. Nettles can be used in teas or soups, or simply cooked and eaten like other green vegetables. Well, this is because cooking the stinging nettle destroys the stinging hairs. Native Americans relied on this plant as a means of keeping themselves awake while staying up late to keep guard. And they also used the fibers from the plant as a rope making material. So next time you go for a walk in nature with your family, Well, no doubt you'll have to keep your eye out for the stinging nettle. You know where I live? I don't see so many of them. But near my house, there are lots of blackberry bushes. And they have lots of thorns. And you can eat the blackberries from the blackberry bush too but I would like to make a drink out of stinging nettles. So I hope I find some nearby one day soon. And I'm gonna read you a story about nettles. This story is an Aesop fable and it's called The Boy and the Nettles. A boy was stung by a nettle he ran home and told his mother, saying, Although it hurts me very much, I only touched it gently. Well, that is just why it stung you, said his mother. The next time you touch a nettle, grasp it boldly, and it will be soft as silk to your hand and not in the least hurt you. So the moral of the story is, whatever you do, do it with all your might. And that's what we get taught from nature, at least from the stinging nettle.
And we are coming up to the end of another half hour of the Secret Kindergarten Radio Show. But hey, we're not done just yet. We've always got time for a little group activity. (laughs) And we are going to do one of my favorite ones. Name that sound. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to play a sound and you're going to name it. And these sounds are all musical instruments. Okay, I'm going to line the first one up. All right, you ready? Here we go. You know what this one is, right? It's a piano! That's right. Did you know there are groups of strings inside the piano? They almost look like strings from other instruments that have strings. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Are you ready? Can you guess this sound? You know what that one was? That's right, it was a violin. Playing something interesting there. Indeed, that was a violin. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Are you ready? This is kind of short. Oh. I feel like someone's making an announcement. Do you know which instrument that is? That's right. It's a trumpet. And that's all we've got time for. I've blown my trumpet enough today. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you at the next one. Bye.